Hi, this is your host, Sabin Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in Valencia, Spain. And today we have with us Nick Van Vigren, you are VP of Engineering at Planet Scale. Uh, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, and um, of course, this is, for me, it's the first day, but it's a couple of days of this event. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that you folks have been to the keynotes, yep. you have been to the booth section also. Tell us, first of all, what kind of energy you are seeing, because this is the first KubeCon of yeah. the year, and also in person after a very long time. I, I can't tell you how fantastic it is to be back in person, seeing booths, seeing people, you know, gathering new information, and even just the uh, kind of the breakout sessions and stuff like that that were happening yesterday. I didn't participate in any, but I peeked my head in. And there's just hundreds of people heads down on laptops collaborating together in person. Uh, it, it, uh, it really feels like things are really getting back into the swing of things. It's great. Yeah, and uh, just a little anecdote that KubeCon is also where I met uh, Jitian and I learned oh, about Planet Scale. So, so that's also you know, kind of a little yeah. history there. Uh, so let's, since uh, the name of the company is already here, so, and you know, as I said, KubeCon is where I met Planet yeah. Scale. So talk about, first of all, the whole journey of the company itself in a couple of years. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a great question. So just a little bit of background on Planet Scale. Um, we are built on top of Vitesse, and we've been around for a handful of years, three, four years now. And so what we've done is we've taken Vitesse and built a serverless database on top of it. So around the middle uh, of the year before last, we kind of started scratch with a brand new kind of control panel, web interface, and things like that. And middle of last year, about summer of last year, we launched the beta of that product. So it's a serverless database, MySQL compatible with Vitesse under the hood. Um, but what we added was a whole series of schema workflows uh, so that you can easily do schema changes collaborate with your team, with your coworkers on those schema changes. Think of it like pull requests, but for, uh, for schema changes. Um, and that went generally available in November. Um, and since then, we've been adding features and kind of building out the whole database platform. So, you know, we're built on top of Vitesse. We love Vitesse uh, and, and all these CNCF technologies. But what we want to do also is add context to them and make it so that pe people can be productive with them in companies and don't necessarily have to become experts of all the underlying technologies. If you look at Vitesse, you know, it was trying to solve, uh, you know, a big problem for YouTube, exactly. you know. So, but if you look at today's world, uh, mm -hmm. when we look at cloud native, there are companies, of course, hyperscalers, you know, Absolutely. major companies who are using Kubernetes, and then there are right. small companies who are using Kubernetes. Absolutely. Kubernetes is more or less like Linux, yeah. you know, it has become Linux of the cloud world. I completely agree with you. Which also means that the, the problems that are folks yeah. facing is different. So when we just like uh, zoom, because we're sitting with a camera, just you know, <laughs> zoom into Vitet itself, uh, what kind of problem you are trying to solve when it comes to scalability and what kind of you know, use yeah. cases you handle? Great question. So you know, I think you, you really raise a couple of good points. I like to talk about layers of abstraction, right? At first it was hardware. We added Linux and operating systems on top. And now you don't really think about the operating system that much. You, you, know, you know how to operate inside of it. We added containers which created a light abstraction after LXC. We've layered Kubernetes, so now your abstraction is multi-machine. Um, and now we're really talking about another layer of abstraction on top of that. So Vitesse was created to solve kind of outrageous scale of super huge websites, right? Think YouTube, things like that, where you've got tens of thousands of servers, millions of users, millions of connections. And it's very good at that, right? It, 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 it's been tested at that scale. Part of what we want to do at Planet Scale is actually bring that massive scale down to a small size that is cost effective, uh, high performance, but also helps people get started with that hyperscale technology as early as possible. You know, the database world is kind of fraught, I think, with so many of these, oh, you know you're going to hit a scaling point, you know you're going to hit a scaling point here. People are planning for their next database when they adopt their first one if they've kind of been through the, um, the ringer a couple of times. So we want to help people pick the database that's going to get them to hyperscale as early as possible and ease them all along that journey from single database cluster all the way to 64, 256, or you know, 1,024 shards of data. Excellent. And once again, one more point that you made was, you know, to uh, you know, as planet scale help companies. Mm -hmm. That one more thing that happens with the open source is that open source, and I may be totally wrong about that, kind of solves day one problem. Yep. Uh, but day two is the real challenge starts where not yep. only you have manage, update, maintain, but also add features, functionality. Sometimes the community may not need feature, but a customer 100%. will. So how do you, so that's what commercialization of open source 100%. play a big role. So can you also talk about that aspect of you yeah. know, planet scale as well? I'd love to. So I think that there, I mean, and again, open source technology, we would not have our business without, without all of the amazing work that's gone into everything from Linux to Kubernetes, Thanos, Prometheus, 
you name it, right? Um, that we're built on a whole host of these open source technologies. And what they do really well is, like you said, solve the day one problem. But what happens at day two is that you need projects that have opinions. And you need projects that have features that are specific to businesses. And if open source projects followed everyone's opinion and mapped everyone's features, they would have 10,000 configuration parameters and they'd be stuck in this sludge of time for another one, time for another one, time for another one. So what we're able to do at planet scale is start to solve those day two problems by having an opinion. This is how the database should work. This is how the database should change. This is how a Kubernetes, a multi-cloud or a multi-region Kubernetes deployment should look like. And by taking on that complexity and opinion ourselves, we can actually solve business problems for our customers instead of just solving technical problems uh, for our customers and help them build faster and build better for their entire journey. So I, you know, nothing we do would be possible without open source, but at some point you have to kind of take an opinion, dig in and say, this is what we support. If you can match our opinions, you can build a business on, on what we're creating. A couple of announcements also are coming, yeah. are coming out this week. And you know, it's our partnership, it's mm -hmm. about new features, it's also about you know, a Pasco series that you folks are going to announce. So let's uh, take one at a time. Let's talk about the new feature that you're going yeah. to add. So we've got three new features that we're launching this week, and I'll take you through them all very quickly, and we can, um, we can kind of go through them. So the first one, the one I'm most excited about, is called uh, Planet Scale Insights. And what Insights is, is the beginnings of an APM or an application monitoring stack inside of PlanetScale. So oftentimes we see people, you know, they use a database, whether it's an open source database they host themselves, a cloud database or anything like that, and they start to use it and they look and say, okay, well, why is my database not performing? Is it my queries? Is it my database? Do I need more resources? And then you have to go buy or build or install a whole other piece of software to get that kind of level of insight, right? Databases aren't telling you this by default. So because we use Vitesse and because we have this rich feed of every query, we're able to say, OK, we can actually track individual query performance using things like uh, query tags. You can actually instrument your application, have your application feed in the context into planet scale. Um, and we can give you a dashboard that says, hey, this query tag, so this API route had the top five slowest queries in this hour. You know, if that API route is too slow, you know, here's why. So it's, a, it's the beginning of, a, of what we want to say is the kind of zero configuration um, APM stack built right into planet scale from day one so that you don't have to go, oh crap, I need this, and then install it and then hope a problem happens again. But you have that history right there built into the tool. So the next one is um, our initial multi-region journey. So we're calling it planet scale portals. Um, and what it is is the ability to project read-only replicas of your database into any AWS region um, that PlanetScale is, is in today. So if you've got users in Australia or users in Europe, users in, in India, uh, you want to be able to serve traffic faster to them. You can put your application there using kind of any one of the front-end uh, platforms that are, are kind of globe-spanning. Um, and you can also put a read-only database right there next to them for super fast kind of local, uh, local API requests or local web requests. And the third is what we're calling Planet Scale Connect. Um, and Planet Scale Connect I'm really excited about. It's the beginning of uh, building an ETL or extract transform load um, system into Planet Scale. So we are working with Airbyte, the um, you know, kind of open source ETL tool. Um, and we are letting users do kind of nearly live syncing from their planet scale database into any one of the data lakes, data warehouses like Redshift, BigQuery, or the open source equivalents of those. So they can their data teams or their marketing teams or their product teams can get nearly real time insight into what's going on in their databases and can start to contextualize some of that data. So we see people right now doing you know, full database dumps every night and these kinds of things like that. And we want to help get those business teams the up-to-date, really up-to-date insights. So Planet Scale Connect will allow people to plug right into the, the database and again, turn it in, into a platform from just being a database. Excellent. Thanks for explaining this feature now. Uh, another thing is uh, partnership. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, so we're also launching a Datadog integration. So we just talked about Planet Scale Insights and a built-in APM, but we understand that it's important for us to be where we are, uh, where our customers are as well. Uh, so you'll be able to plug a Datadog API key in um, and immediately get statistics about your database's size, query performance, and things like that sent right over to your Datadog account so that you can add alerts and you know, help capacity plan 
and tie it in with your existing ecosystem if you're a Datadog customer already. Excellent. Now the last piece of you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a big week. Yeah, big yeah, week. it's a, it's podcast series. Yeah. Tell us about that. So we actually have two pieces of content we're launching. One of them is the history of the database podcast. And when we sat down and talked about this, I was originally a little skeptical, I won't lie. But after seeing the first couple of episodes and listening to what we were going to make, it's fantastic. So we're bringing in experts from kind of across the field, and we're going to tell the stories of how the modern database got to be what it is. So starting with literal stone tablets that people were etching, going into the first kind of modern databases for things like flight search and travel, we're going to kind of walk people through why the relational database looks the way that it does and maybe why they have a love-hate relationship with their database today. It's really good content and it's, I think it's going to be a really interesting way of exploring. You know, People don't think about this kind of thing, right? Why, why, why are computers the way they are? We're going to help add some of that context for the database. Excellent. Um, is, that, is that all? One more. Um, so we also have what we're, what we're calling the future database. And this is a video and a blog post, and we'll con continue to kind of keep touching on this as we go. But it's kind of a bit of a calling our shot, as it were, in, in like in pool, where we're talking about what the database of the future is going to look like. And this is not a one-to-one -one mapping of planet scales features. This is not a, you know, a spec sheet. There are things on this list that we don't do today. But the idea is to start to call out if you're a technology decider or if you're looking to the future and planning, what are you wanting out of your database? Things like you know, linear scalability, things like being able to query it from anywhere, having it be global, accessible on everything from toasters all the way over to you know, big, gigantic, bare metal servers. And the kind of thing that are going to get people to be able to develop the next wave of applications we want to help people think about what they should be looking for in their databases they're picking. And we, we've looked at our competition, we've looked at existing databases, and you know, again, we're not trying to tie this to PlanetScale's direct roadmap. We're really saying we're on the cusp, I think, of a next evolution of what databases are and what people are doing with their databases. We want to help kind of spur some thoughts to help people think about, okay, what is, what is my next database going to look like? I'd like to talk about one more thing, if you don't mind. So in March, a couple of months ago, we launched a feature called Planet Scale Rewind. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is a schema migration undo button. So you can move your schema forward, right? You can add a table, drop a column, you know, change an index or something like that. What we realized was a significant portion of the downtime that we've, we have taken at other jobs kind of in our, in our uh, careers was because of bad schema changes. And you can have the best schema change process, the best schema change tool in the world, but if you, the user, are typing in bad schema, it doesn't matter. All those tools get you to the cliff faster. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to give people an easy way out. Instead of having to restore from a backup or get a time-delayed database replica and fast-forward it to the moment and then add the old data back on top, we just give you a, a rewind button. So if you do a bad schema change, if you remove a column or add a table that you don't like, for 30 minutes after the deploy request, you can just click Rewind. And it will swap you back to the old schema without losing the data that you've written in the intermediary portion. So if you've had new user signups, you don't have to worry about having to ask those users to re-register or going and replaying all of that traffic. It will all just work. And this is, again, part of that, I think, outcome-driven, business-driven attitude that we've taken towards databases. We're coming at it from the perspective of a user, from the perspective of a company, and saying, what slows us down? What stops us from hitting our business objectives? Features like this. So that's all I want to talk about. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, we've got a lot this week that's, that's happening, and I'm really excited to share it all. But I, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to make sure we covered everything, because there's a, a lot of hard work that's gone on behind the scenes to make it possible. I'm no surprise that you know, your name is also Planet of Skills. So whatever <laughs> you do is Planet of Skills. Exactly. So. We try. <laughs> Nick, thank you so much thank for you. taking time out, you know, sit down with me today and of course not only share these announcements but also share some insights. In the, yeah. Anytime. So I, I appreciate your time and as you know, we should uh, do it more often depending on whether it's online or in person. So Anytime. Thank you. thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy KubeCon. Yeah.